You pick up the rusting pickaxe at the very moment an ominous crack rings out and you watch with horror as the ceiling begins to lower. You rush back the way you came. The hell is this? The ceiling descends rapidly, making you run faster. QTEs? I'm telling you, this game has a little bit of everything. Yeah, all right, everybody, welcome to the Indie Showcase with the Birdman. I am, said Birdman. This here is Nightly Passions. An RPG with plenty of plenty different, I guess, genres mixed into it is actually fairly intriguing. I've seen aspects of uh, your classic turn-based battling. I've seen aspects of, like, you know, first-person, like, dungeon crawlish type of mechanics into it. Overall, it's supposed to be a story about you, a hunter, looking for your sister in a world inhabited by possible monster girls. I mean, there's one here in front, but I... Well, what is she supposed to be? Some sort of spider monster girl? No. That can't be the case. That's silly. It's probably just concept art that never really made into the game. Why must you turn my office into a house of lies? Ah, oh, good to be home. I bet, but you look half dead from fatigue. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a rest. Well then, if you're finished hunting, I'll be waiting in bed. A weird place for her to be. Maybe she's tired herself. You don't have time to ask the questions whirling on the tip of your tongue before, as if anticipating it. She answers it by walking to the bedroom door. It's pretty cold out there alone. You just know. Sometime later. Drawing near the blacksmith's house from a distance, you spot him in a doorway. He's uh, clearly very nervous, constantly looking over his shoulder, but as soon as he notices you, he sighs a relief. You barely made it in time. It's just about to begin. He waits well, with ill-concealed anticipation looking at you. Yeah, everything's in order. The medicine is ready. The blacksmith lets out a relief breath. All that's left is to wait for my helper. What kind of helper? The vampira steps out from behind a nearby tree. Ah, ho ho ho! So we have elves, we have vampire girls, we have spider girls up front in the main menu. Alright. A helper is never late. Who are you, young miss? Ah, she's gonna help us. Uh, administer the medicine. You can get acquainted later. Right now, we don't have time. Onward. The blacksmith nods, not taking his intent gaze from the vampire, and throws open the door to the cellar. You step through the doorway, followed by the vampire. Who do we have here? Hunched over in the middle of the room is the arms trader. Her wrists are locked in iron manacles. From each manacle, a chain extends to the room's corners. Half a dozen massive chains affixed to the pistons of the walls wind securely around her limbs and tether the young woman's neck. You give the vampire a sideway glance. Her eyes take on a crimson tint and... Keen talons sprout from the ends of her fingers. You hold out your arm in front of her, locking her from the arm straighter. The vampire takes another step forward, as if oblivious to you. Hey, listen to me. We're here to help, remember? The heel. She's not our enemy. She shakes her head, suppressing a fit of rage. Her eyes become focused and composed once more. Yes, to work. You quietly catch your breath. The dread that she might fling herself at the ancient foe had never left you from the beginning of this undertaking. You again turn to the arms trader. I have the medicine, bud. What? You have to take it only once you've transformed. And I should warn you. About what? It's gonna hurt like hell. Hurt even more than now? It'll make me laugh. It's starting. Suddenly she convulses, a scream filled with unbearable pain echoes out. Her arms twist and bend unnaturally, and in her legs, even though the skin, the warping, the deforming of bones is visible. Her body slowly, irrevocably transforming into a wolf's. Tough gray fur appears on the young woman's skin. Her face elongates and her eyes turn a shade of yellow, thin with rabid madness. I mean, it doesn't look too scary. But wait! Okay, that's uh, a bit more intimidating. The vampire is seeing everything that's happened, cast off her cloak and moves to intercept the werewolf. The werewolf's nightmarish jaws clack together. The girl springs up and sails over them. Gracefully dropping to the floor behind it, she steps towards the monster. The werewolf, still held prisoner by the final chain, cannot turn around and face her. Howling, it only digs into the floor harder, still straining it to break its fetters. 
However, the vampire seizes a length of chain hanging from the beast's neck and pulls on with all of her strength. The beast is thrown backwards, its terrifyingly growl turning into a wheeze. Overcoming the vampire's resistance, it climbs to its feet. Again, knots of muscles bulging under its fur. It slowly bud, inexorably claws its way forward. The chain begins to steadily slip through the vampire's fingers, the werewolf's proves to be even stronger. D distracted! The blacksmith, realizing that this is addressed to him, grabs the wooden stave leaning against the wall. Running up to the werewolf, he forcibly jabs it at its side. The beast gives a jerk, and the vampire, getting a chance to properly brace herself, throws her whole body back, yanking the chain towards her. A hair-raising crunch is punctuated by a yelp from the werewolf, who goes sprawling to the ground. Well, it's about time. The werewolf's maw opens, so without hesitation you lean up and pour the contents of the bottle between its jut wide jaws. Jumping back immediately, you watch as the werewolf's body first gives off smoke, then a crimson glow, its eyes open, and it loses a terrible long-drawn howl that shakes the very walls with its force. The predator's body breaks down the radiance, taking on a human shape, and the howl turns into a heart-rending wail. And then, a helpless girl lies by before you, once more shivering in the cold of the freezing cellar floor. Is it really over? Yeah, I believe so. It's night outside, the full moon is still in the sky. But she's not a beast anymore. Now she needs rest and a good sleep. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you, Boat. I know who your companion is. I can only surmise that she is no human, but... Family believe that a person's soul is defined by their actions, not their form, so... Thank you. Your secrets are safe with me. I trust that you likewise will not tell anyone about the curse that befell my daughter. It will be as you say. Take care of her, blacksmith. Motion to vampire towards the exit, you leave the cellar. Oh, so it was his daughter. I guess there was a resemblance there, sure. Now everything will be peaceful once more. Now I suspect that as long as there are humans, there will never be peace. I'm sure that no few battles still await us. Be ready. She smiles softly. I will. Without even looking at her, you can sense that she's no longer nearby. And yet, you're confident that when you need her, She'll be by your side. So, what do you want the head of the wooden monster for, anyway? Doesn't it look good up there? She gestures to the wall, which seems well prepared for terrifying trophies. Several studs are paced out along the length of the room, from one which hangs the head of a slain tree monster. Do you find it amusing? No, I find it soothing. When I see that hat, I remember the one of the most nightmarish monstrosities, a creature that spread fear in our town, is dead. And now life here has become a bit better. Yeah, but the rest of the pegs there... Unfortunately, the tree wasn't the only evil in the area. I will not rest until this wall is adorned in the heads of every one of them. Everyone that robs little kids of their fathers and their mothers. You look at her sympathetically. Intriguing. Only... You're not exactly an Amazon. Yes, I haven't been trained in the fighting arts. But that's precisely why I'm working. So that I have the ability to hire someone who'll undertake their killing. Think I'm a fool? I might be. But I will not stop until every one of those abominations has been eradicated. Well, she's strong. Doesn't hide away or complain, just acts. She actually does things for this town. I wish there were more people like her. Well, it's certainly better than the women's gathering at the well. So... Whose head is, uh, to be next in the next peg? Mm-hmm. And if I tell you, you'll fancy yourself a hero and march off into the next meal? No way. Did I say I would try to kill it? Because as far as I can remember, I didn't. It's just that I'm... Curious, yeah. Fine. Next up is a golem. Huh. I've heard of them. Never really come across one before. They're humanoid stone creatures, devoid of speech. Opinions are split about their origins. Some believe that the monstrous forces of nature created them, others that foul magic did. Theologians unanimously insist that they are offspring from the fornication of fallen angels and humans. Whatever the case may be, golems are merciless monsters, destroying all who are unlucky enough to cross their path. Yeah, but they're practically extinct, aren't they? Yeah, very few of them remain, and one of those few has taken residence near town. Are you serious? Where? In the cave in the enchanted forest. Dendroids, golems, eh, probably shouldn't pick mushrooms in there, huh? Well, 
It's called the Enchanted Forest for a reason, to make it clear to people like you that it's best to stay out of there. You turn a deaf ear to her jives, recognizing that they're her way of preserving her sense of self would And is Golem? You want to know how to kill it? I'm afraid you aren't up to the task, Hunter. How would you know? Fighter's way better than you have faced off with it, but it's still alive. And if I do manage it, what then? You'll receive befitting pay. As much gold as you can carry. Gold again? The girl's eyes narrow. Perhaps she was expecting that. At the mention of a heap of gold, you'd start clamoring that you would slaughter every golem in the region eyes agleam. Apparently, it isn't very often that she encounters people who are fairly indifferent to riches. Guess I got something else in mind, huh? Okay. So it seems we have reached now, um, as I mentioned, some of the little first person, I guess if you want to call it more of a point and click type of situation, but a little bit of a crawling about here in a dungeon. So, square X and uh, three stripes. Go down. After walking through a dark chasm, you enter a broad cave. Discernible ahead of you are three openings, one of which is currently locked off by a metal grate. In the center of the grate, a circular indentation glitters. Some kind of disc missing here. Alright, we need a disc, huh? Let's go back if we want to. Let's see about, uh, should I continue with stripes? I mean, you got me here, right? Winding up in another broad cave, you notice right away that the floor beneath your feet is paved with large slabs and loosely adjoin each other. Ah! When you walk a few paces forward, suddenly you're blasted by a pillar of fire from out of nowhere, leaving you scorched. Oh, good, it was a trap. Cute. Well, it did bring me forward, if that means anything. Uh, should we continue with the stripes? <laughs> Let me go to the diamond now. Walking into the room, you see a brook. As you slake your thirst, you feel a surge of energy. Also, we're able to heal ourselves? Yeah. Alright. Just after you emerge from the cave, it collapses completely. No! The one time use. Alright. Uh, I guess I'll take this one. Hey! Got ourselves a pickaxe. You pick up the rusting pickaxe at the very moment an ominous crack rings out and you watch with horror as the ceiling begins to lower. You rush back to where you came. The hell is this? The ceiling descends rapidly, making you run faster. QTEs? I'm telling you, this game has a little bit of everything. After a little longer, you have to duck to avoid the sinking cave roof. You insert the desk into the cavity of the door. Oh, okay. Uh... Oh, I see. We're just supposed to... Gotcha, gotcha. So... Down? What is it, like a freaking raid from Lord of the Rings or what? Oh, I got it already. As soon as the picture in the disc is rearranged in the proper pattern, there's a muted click after... After... A muted click somewhere within the wall. You hear the metallic rattling of chains in a few seconds, the slab blocking the wall side smoothly aside. In the hole that's revealed, there's steps leading upward. Upon emerging from the labyrinth, you find yourself in an expansive cavern. Light from the sun or the moon works its way down through fissures in the ceiling's dome, allowing you to even discern the distant walls. Suddenly, the cavern lurches. An unintelligible booming voice fills the air. Whirling sharply around, you can't believe your eyes. A section of the wall is coming to life in an incredible fashion. The stones have started to stir, beginning to rearrange themselves. It's a, it's a golem! And as I mentioned, now we've gone apparently into a, <laughs> a deck battler, huh? A little bit of everything with this one, it does seem. So, bleeding cannot be inflected and immune to poison. Yeah, as a rock creature, I imagine that would be the case. What's this? Rock side. Deal damage equal to your defense. Ooh, that could be good. You could pump up with this, and as a matter of fact, not a bad idea. Let me get some defenses then. And then we use um, this to do 147 damage. Hey. And I guess we use that. Rock slide. Alright, let's see. What's this? Squash 50. Seems like it's looking to break shield, if I wager to guess. Double damage for one turn. Burge's negative effects, granting to be 5 HP for each removed effect. Is rock slide considered uh, an effect? And what does it do? Let's try it and find out, I guess. Cool. Well, I guess uh, we learned that rock slide is not an effect, even though it lingers over here. Might as well just attack this dude then. Alright, so we can do. That was a dodge. Oh, oh, oh. 
I mean, did I die? It went for 50 damage. I still took 50 damage, even though I landed all those dodges. I don't know, maybe I avoided the negative effect of the cost. Who He's looking to heal himself now. Repost for 20% of damage taken. Well then. Coup de gras. A powerful precision strike that deals 176 to 207 damage. If, after the damage is applied, the target has less than 100 HP, it instantly kills. And it would obviously have under 100 HP. Let's go. Hey, uh, I got your gold, man. Gold? Nah, I'm not, I'm not in it for gold, you know? Hey, next time, I'm not taking a single step without a wagon with a team of oxen. You set the bag with the stone head on the table, which creaks and protests at the weight. Well, I'll be, you did it. Eh, yeah, didn't even break a sweat. But while I was ha hauling in there, I memorized the entire family tree of every sorcerer in the world. Fucking magic. How come the monster couldn't have been animated from, say, a haystack? But no, it had absolutely had to be a block of stone. You heave a deep sigh, the arms trader burst out in good natured laughter, but you see the light in her eyes. I didn't think you'd pull this off. Hoping that I'd croak, uh, so you'd have to pay me? She shakes her head. No paying you shouldn't pose a problem, and besides, I'm glad that I uh, was wrong. Wait here. The young woman disappears into another room, returning a moment later with a compact parcel. Ah, and look at that, there's actually going to be skill points and everything, too. Here, it's yours. Huh, doesn't look like a heap of gold. Since you seem pretty uninterested in money, I thought that... That what? Ah, yes. You can simply say, Well done, thanks, the kingdom's in your debt now. Go keep putting your ass on the line. Am I right? She smiles. I thought that you might be interested in a... different sort of payment. All right. Well, quite the payment indeed. Um, as I've mentioned, it seems that the game, or at least this demo in particular, was kind of jumping us around to different portions of the story of the game itself whenever it does come out fully. But um, one is fairly intriguing, especially because it has like a little bit of everything, right? It's visual novel focused, obviously. But then we have little things to kind of break it from the monotony of just, you know, sitting down and reading text over and over. So I do like that a little bit. I don't really have the patience too much for visual novels. Like, you know, I'm, I need a little bit of... Uh, things to do on occasion. And I think that this game is the perfect compliment for somebody such as myself with a small little smooth brain that's like, you know, oh, I can't just sit here and read text over and over and over. I gotta do something. It's a perfect way for that. Plus, along with the extra scenes that tosses your way, it's a, it's a nice little combination of everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed what didn't make this video be over on the Patreon, along with other exclusive long format Let's Play series. So that's something that's more along your line of things. But um, regardless of which, Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you next time.